Airways presents You're interested in the West Indies? I have two weeks vacation. Maybe you can tell me where I should go. Uber L trip would be to fly from New York to San Juan, a little light trip to the Dominican Haiti, uh -oh, another to the Virgin Islands. They're only 30 minutes away, then down to Trinidad, Across the Caribbean to Jamaica, up to Havana, over to Miami, and back home. How's that? Wonderful. Come on, let's go. No, that's impossible. I haven't a thing to wear. Nothing to wear? Uh-oh, how many times have I heard that? Just look over there. Clip, clip, clippity clip. 10 pounds, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 66 pounds. See what you can take within 66 pounds? All the clothes you need and then some. No passport required. Just call your travel agent. He'll arrange all details. Your attention, please. Pan American Clipper Flight 201 leaving for San Juan, Port of Spain, Rio and Buenos Aires. Passengers may now go aboard. Su atención, el vuelo Pan American 201 partirá inmediatamente para San Juan, Puerto España, Rio y Buenos Aires. Los pasajeros pueden pasar a bordo. Beyond this Pan American gateway lies adventure, romance, and realization of your finds. Lands rich in lore and legend of conquest and faith. Islands of tropic beauty dot the sapphire sea where lusty buccaneers once sailed and plundered. Where men of daring quench their thirst for adventure in exploration, struggle, and accomplishment. America's Sea of Destiny. San Juan, aerial crossroads of the Caribbean. Daily, passengers from many lands come and go at the Pan American Guest House. The Guest House is maintained for the convenience of passengers and has all the comforts of a modern hotel. Your host is proud to show you picturesque sights, even introduce you to a little mystery. Long, dark tunnels, dank cisterns, thick, brooding walls. Ah, the Devil's Sentry Box. Every sentinel, every stationed here, disappeared leaving only his uniform and a strong odor of brimstone. In the name of Britain, these towering Spanish battlements were besieged several times. Once in their hour of despair, the island people formed a long procession. Carrying lighted tapers, they prayed to St. Ursula and her 11,000 virgins. Seeing so many lights and certain that reinforcements had arrived, the British abandoned their siege. A hundred years before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock, Cobblestone streets had been laid in San Juan. Today, this is a bustling city with modern buildings, colleges, and luxurious clubs like the Casa de España, with its atmosphere of old Spain. San Juan, cosmopolitan and a little provincial, sophisticated and sometimes naive, friendly and always hospitable. By Clipper, the Virgin Islands are only 30 minutes away. In the air, new beauties unfold. Blue surrounds us, bright, shining blue. Below, the indigo blue of ocean depths and the white lace of breaking surf edging the shores of St. Thomas. Across the bay, Bluebeard's Tower still looks down upon the city. Yes, Blue, that bold, ruthless pirate who captured golden treasure and women's hearts. Seven wives he had, each one he killed. 
Some he buried right beneath this patio. Famous islands, rich islands. So many clustered islands that Columbus himself named them for Santa Ursula and her numerous virgins. For them, Uncle Sam paid all of $25 million. Today, St. Thomas is a duty-free port, and the busy downtown section offers incredible bargains, from French perfumes to oriental silks and American cigarettes. Once a pirate's paradise, today a shopper's paradise. Like a precious necklace, the myriad isles of the Antilles dot the pulsing sea, each stamped with its own lure and vivid history. When Columbus landed, the savage Caribs lived here. For them, the sea was named. From them, the conquerors learned to smoke tobacco, eat potatoes, and sleep in hammocks. Spanish fleets soon sailed the seas with fantastic New World wealth. Over the horizon loomed pirate ships, and buccaneers with blood-stained hands infested the islands. The Indians died off, the treasure was gone. Men turned to the rich soil, and into every port sailed slave traders, their filthy caravels laden with human cargo. Trinidad, also named by Columbus, lies straight ahead. Swept by gales, he vowed to name the first land sighted for the Holy Trinity. He called this island a terrestrial paradise. Lakes of pitch, streams of tar, oysters growing on trees, fish that sing, strange stories in far-off lands, lands of new adventure, new-bound friends. Well, I'm glad to hear you enjoyed your flight, Miss Dale. I know you're going to have a nice visit here in Trinidad. I'm sure of it. Oh, Mr. Reed. Miss Dale, I'd like you to meet one of your fellow passengers. Mr. Reed. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Reed's one of our clipper commuters. Flies around these islands quite regularly. Say, as a matter of fact, he's going to be on your plane next Thursday. Oh, how nice. Yes, I'm going to Kingston on business. Where are you going? I'm going to Kingston, too, but not on business. You see, this is a trip I've always dreamed of and never thought I could take. I only have a two-week vacation. Then I take it this is your first visit here? Yes, it is. Well, I know Trinidad like a book, and I'm sure I'd make an excellent guide. May I have the pleasure? I'd love it. Well, suppose I get your car. Fine. Fine. Music is on the soft tropic air. Calypso, that rhythmic singing ballad, uniquely Trinidad's own. Spontaneous and unwritten, its witty lyrics carry important messages or give barb comment on people and events. An American Calypso, where you going? An American Calypso, the world's your home. Today in Alaska, where rivers run full, with empty glaciers and toads dumb poles, then Honolulu and Midway and Guam. You landed in China before so long. An American Calypso, where you going? An American Calypso, the world's your home. Some days it's been real, you'd rather be a drop from the skies on car rides. Next trip you choose Vegas, Australia or France. A drop off you see an African dance. Although under the British flag, Port of Spain presents the picture of an East Indian city. Bazaars line the streets filled with the riches of the Far East, ivory, jade, and brass. Turban fakers conjure prophecies and mumble fortunes. In the streets, men of many races and religions, side by side, and Mohammedan mosque and Hindu temple. To minimize slave uprisings, African drums were prohibited, but ingenuity outwitted municipal decrees. New instruments were contrived from anything at hand, a weird collection of discarded oil drums, gasoline cans, brake shoes, hammered, twisted, and shaped, and the steel band was born.
The North Shore is mountainous, dense with luxuriant jungle growth, sweet with the fragrance of spice trees. Long winding roads twist and turn under branches dripping with scarlet blossoms past streams nearly lost in magnificent arches of bamboo. Beyond these palms, along this same rugged shore, many a pirate crew has sailed, and in battle lost his chests of gold to the depths of the silent sea. On the vast, rich central plain, sugarcane grows high and gives the island one of its chief industries. During the cane cutting season, men, women, and children swing their huge machetes to the steady drone of their work songs. Then at night, the downbeat echoes, beckoning all from hills and plantations to join in Africa's ancient dance. <laughs> European custom of fencing becomes the famous stick dance. A good stick dancer can knock out a predetermined tooth or even stop the falling raindrops. <laughs> to the delight of wide-eyed youngsters, the spell proceeds from one captivating dance to another. African tempo in the Shango and Ballet, age of ritual dances of mass hypnotism. These dervish whirls of Far Eastern religious ceremony are executed to an African syncopation by musicians uniquely squatting on the ground in Hindu fashion. Jamaica, Jamaica, where that most notorious of pirates, Henry Morgan, became governor of the island and was knighted. Kingston, the capital, typically British colonial, all the flavor of the old world. White helmeted police direct traffic with stoic calm. In the beautiful gardens of the Myrtle Bank Hotel, Jamaica's Regiment Band gives its Sunday concerts. In Hope Gardens, the display of blooms, plants, and ornamental foliage is extraordinary. Gigantic trees with branches and enormous trunks cover huge areas. Trim lawns are dotted with bubbling fountains. Exotic flowers, flamboyant in color, stand out in exquisite contrast against the bright blue skies. In common with all the island peoples, Jamaicans express their feelings in rhythmic song. Warm, gay, and carefree.
rafting down the Rio Grande is good fun. If there isn't a native raft handy, the River Boys will make one for you on the spot. Recipe? Good, sturdy bamboo poles, whipped together with strong, sinewy vines, and presto, there's your river conveyance. Downstream is easy, uh, but tell us, Captain, how do you get your raft back? You see, in going up back the river, they let the little boys take it up back, you see? When you get to the dead water, they pull it along to the rapids, they tie it with a string and dry it behind them until they are over, you see? If you go fast, you may get up by four hours, you see? Hello. It's quicker by Clipper. From quiet lagoons to cool mountain tops, there's wide scenic variety on the North Shore. Rambling hotels offer golf, tennis, bathing, yachting, riding, and even mountain climbing through emerald forests where the remote silence is broken only by bird calls. Montego Bay, winter haven for the pleasure-loving international smart set boasts the finest crystal clear water in the world, an average of 80 degrees the year round. are alive with gay entertainment. For a shilling or two, Jamaican jitterbugs give their all. Perhaps not as hot as Harlem, but just give them a few years and these youngsters may yet make the big time. I could stay here longer. I have news for you. What? I've just gotten a cable from my friend Mauricio Cervante is in Havana, inviting both of us to come and spend the weekend in this place there. Oh, how nice. You like his wife, Mary, very much, too. Mary's mother is a Cuban, but her father was born in the States. She has all the charm of both nationalities. When do they expect us? Well, I've made arrangements to leave for Havana tomorrow. Chili's, the world's sugar bowl and cigar box. Opening its arms wide and welcome, Havana, playground of the Caribbean. A city riotous with color, tiled roofs, green plazas, and perpetual summer. Its charm is bold, its splendor strident, its tempo vigorous. There is a fullness of life. Pavements crowded with smartly dressed people, country cousins in high peak straw hats, youngsters with trays of orchids, Turban mammies dolefully hawking newspapers. Lottery sellers calling lucky numbers. Their cries mingling with the raucous shouts of fruit vendors, auto blasts, clanging trolley bells. A medley of sound playing a lively counterpoint to the wistful melodies of the always present street singer. Havana bears the earmarks of time, yet much of it is ultra-modern. Sleek motor cars in a steady stream speed along wide boulevards past buildings of other centuries. In the heart of the city, El Prado, double planted boulevard. The President's Palace. The marble capital, famed for the 24 karat Kimberly diamond embedded in its floor beneath the dome. 
Throughout the downtown section, the buildings are traditionally Spanish. Wide, high-ceiling sidewalk arcades give shade from the hot sun and shelter from sudden showers. Coffee-colored buildings of the old city crowd closely upon its maze of narrow streets. Iron grills, musty shops, and genius gadgets for peeling fruit. Flower vendors, alley cafes, and shadowy bazaars are all bits of local color to talk about back home. Beautifully colored tile on pillars, doorways, floors, walls give a Moorish accent to many an old building a love of artistry fast being destroyed by mass production. No language problem in Havana. That insignia identifies an English-speaking officer, polite, courteous, and well-informed. Towering against the blue skies, partly hewn from the rock itself, El Moro crowns its jutting promontory, rigid, forceful as a mailed fist. To the tread of visitors' footsteps, a unique street singer gives voice to the famed La Paloma. Ship Maine, the fashionable Hotel Nacional. Along spacious parkways and palm line boulevards vie with those of wealthy Cubans. Set in luxurious gardens or built around quiet patios are homes of modern architecture. On the outskirts of the city are numerous resorts where one may lay and stroll beneath tropic sky, tropic gardens. The spirit of Havana greets you in the smoldering of a dark-eyed senorita. Sing, whether your love goes away, sing. and other white sand beaches dot the shore. Thousands relax to the tune of laughter, music, and clinking glasses. Famous Varadero, one of Cuba's finest resorts, sending sands to the wide open sea. It is the restful custom of most visitors to bask hours in the warm sun and indulge in prolonged late morning bathing.